Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today is the Songs Category 1 public meeting, and what that means is this is a, a meeting between technical folks from Southern California Edison and the NRC. There will be a period of time at the end of some of the initial discussion when the public will be able to will take questions from the public and uh, we'll be able to answer those questions. Thank you all of you for, for the discussion and questions. Uh, now that concludes the non-proprietary portion of this meeting. So you folks on the phone are getting ready to go to you uh, to take your questions and comments as well as those in the room. And uh, we're gonna take about 20 minutes for this period of time of questions. So is there, are there any questions in the room right now on these RAIs? And I wanna caution you that we're gonna stick to the subject of this meeting uh, the REIs that were discussed and you heard about today. So are, are there any questions in the room? Kendra, stand up and introduce yourself, please. Hi, my name is Kendra Ulrich. I'm with Friends of the Earth. Um, my question uh, pertains to the REI 32 response. Um, with all due respect, uh, quite frankly, it reads to me like a schoolboy's justification for why they couldn't complete a homework assignment. This uh, response essentially is asserting that they understand what the regulations are more than the regulators themselves, that they understand what the interpretation of the technical specification is more than the staff who have told them that they don't believe that this restart plan complies with that technical specification. That said, there's a uh, very interesting uh, indication from their choice to try to comply with this by submitting the InterTech OA supplement. And I was very encouraged to hear that Emmett Murphy on the panel here said that he had a number of questions related to that. And that's because the InterTech OA relies upon traditional measuring data and operational experience. But what we know, what Edison has admitted, is that the phenomena that are experienced within the replacement steam generators are unique globally. So what they're saying is that by using the operational assessments that actually address what's actually happening within these replacement steam generators, they can't show that they actually meet the terms of that technical specification. So what they're actually doing is relying upon tuber mechanisms that are known, which isn't the reality of what's going on here. So they're asking the NRC to set aside the reality of the situation and accept that this is somehow related to what you know, the rest of the industry globally has experienced. Now my question relates specifically to a public transparency question. Because at the end of this, the last two sentences of their response clearly indicate that this is a test or experiment. They say we will take this approach until we determine what the operational limits are. That says this is an experiment or a test. Okay, so what's your question? My question is that this reads as a thinly veiled argument for a confirmatory order. What I want to know, because we've been hearing that that is the case, is whether or not Edison has been approaching anybody within the NRC with a request for a confirmatory order to address the NRC's concerns. All right, thank you, Kendra. Dan, would you like to address that? It might be a better question for the for the licensee. Um, I, I have not been approached by anyone on the uh, from the licensee requesting a confirmatory order. Yeah, what I would add to that is, um, you know, throughout this whole process, you know, we we've made it clear to the licensee um, that that all options, are, all all regulatory approaches, are are, are on the table for us. Uh, of you know, we, when we complete our review, we'll make a make a recommendation to uh, to, to Eric Eric Leeds and, and Elmar Collins on what is the appropriate approach to take. Um, so that you know, I, I would say that. Uh, a confirmatory order, an order, a license amendment, I mean, everything is on the table right now. There's no, there's no determination as to what has to be done uh, in order to, to be able to restart. We're, we're continuing our review, and we won't be able to make that determination until we complete that review. So changing a technical specification, 
What process does that require? If a licensee wants to change a technical specification, what is the appropriate process to do so? If the licensee wants to change a technical specification, the process is laid out in 5090. It's a license amendment. That's correct. And in this case, NRC staff, and thank you for that, NRC staff have said that this doesn't appear to meet the terms of the license. Edison has come back and said, well, full power means whatever we say it means, whatever we want to limit our operation to. That's different. So in any event, I, the public has been demanding a license amendment process. NRC staff have come back, as was indicated by Mr. Howell, and said that that is not the position that was indicated to the licensee, I believe he said on January 29th, 30th. Um, so in this situation, it would be wholly inappropriate and completely subvert the demand of the public for a license amendment process in a situation in which the licensee's uh, response doesn't comply with the terms of their license. All right. And that's, that is your position. All right. Thank you, Sandra. I would just want to clarify that the, the RAI um, does not make any conclusions. All it does is ask for additional information. Uh, in, in particular, it asks for uh, the, the licensee to demonstrate why, why they believe that they're in compliance with, uh, with the technical specifications um, or provide a 100% a uh, operational assessment at 100% uh, rated thermal power. Um, it's because we we needed that additional information to be able to uh, to, com to continue our review on, on in, in part of our overall assessment is, is is what they're planning on doing is in compliance with the with the requirements with the regulations with the license um, and such. So. That's, that's the intersection. All right. All right. Thank you, Kendra. We're going to go to the phone for a minute. Uh, do we have any callers on the phone who'd like to ask some questions, make comments? If you'd like to ask a question over the phone, please press star 1 and record your name. Again, please press star 1 and record your name to ask a question. One moment. Dan Hirsch. Your line is open. Hi, Dan. Hi, uh, can you folks hear me? We sure can. Go ahead. Hello, all. Um, I had a couple of questions and, and a generalized comment. Um, one uh, smaller matter is that you were told by Edison that they assumed the same wear rate, um, but in fact what they assumed for that was on the volume, and then they reduced it by 70% in terms of the percent through wall. So I think you may want to take a look at that. The second point I want to make is, is more important. You asked some questions, NRC, of Edison as to whether they were proposing or making commitments regarding um, having to get NRC approval if they either operated um, at higher power than 70 percent or uh, would they wanted to run for more than the five months. As I read their answer to RII 32 and, and what they said in their slide, I'm a little concerned that they may have slid over those two matters. As I see their answer, they're saying that they would not run at higher than 70 percent power without NRC OK, but they're proposing to be able to run at five for five months, shut down, test their experiment, and then decide to run again and again and again. There's no indication in the statements that they're actually asking for permission from NRC for any of that subsequent run. And I think you may want to get that clarified as to whether they are asking you for five months authorization or asking you for unlimited authorization where they shut down and then they decide whether to keep running again and again and again. And lastly, this is related on REI 32, I just think someone has to say very clearly that it really shakes public confidence in the credibility of Edison to have them come in and try to say that 70 percent power is full power. And um, I was pleased to hear that the NRC staff in its January meetings had, had rejected that interpretation. But it's also very troubling to hear them saying that they have now hired someone to try to come up with an analysis to try to demonstrate that they can run at 100% power. 
obviously we wouldn't be here if they could run at 100% power. If 100% power was safe, there would be no need to run at 70% power. And I think this, the credibility is beginning to seriously crumble about this entire process. And I want to point out that the analysis that they may be doing, if it's just for five months, would be insufficient to prove what you need to have proven, which is that indeed um, they can run for the long periods of time that they seem to be contemplating. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Dan. I'm going to take those one at a time. Doug, go ahead. Well, actually, Emma, did you have anything on the first first part of that? The, the growth rate rates in any way? Right. Yes, I thought this is Emmett Murphy. Uh, if I heard the gentleman correctly, uh, uh, he basically restated what I think we heard uh, earlier in response to RAI uh, 26, namely uh, that uh, as they look ahead, uh, they are rejecting wear rates based on a constant volume, uh, 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 constant rate of removal of uh, volume. That's a... Uh, um, a standard approach to uh, evaluation of problems of this type. Okay. All right. Um, if I understood the second part, um, it was related to the commitments and whether or not um, the REI, the response to REI 32 was requesting or indicating the, a desire to operate at 70% for an, an unlimited Period beyond um, beyond beyond the first uh, the first 150 days. Um, the, what I would say on that is, you know, we, we're we're definitely going to be looking at the specifics of that RAI 32. We've only had a couple of days to look at it, um, and and, I, and I'm, I'm certain that we're, that would be something that we're we're going to want to make sure we we understand, you know, what what exactly those commitments. Or, or their statements mean, and you know, if there's a need for uh, any clarification, and as, as Tom, what you mentioned earlier, um, you know, if there if there is any need for that, we can we would talk and, and, and discuss that and, and and get those clarifications made. Um, you know, I, to to the specifics of what it what it means, um, uh, you know, I, I can't comment on that right now because, as I said, we're still reviewing it. You know, unless you you wanted to, to respond to that in any way as to what what. But the intent, you know, whether whether you're, it, it actually states what uh, Mr. Hirsch was uh, saying. Uh, well, what what we have stated here in our response is that durations of run will be determined by the operational assessment process in accordance with the steam generator management program, which is required by our tech specs. Standard program used across the country, and we've said we will limit operation to 70 percent power, determine the length of the proposed subsequent operating period based on that program. And then the, the operational assessments are submitted to the NRC in accordance with the program. Okay. All right. Um, the third part of that, I think, referred to the Intertech supplemental OA, and I'm not sure if I quite heard a question in that. Um, Emmett, did you hear anything that was a question in that? Maybe I misunderstood. Just more. I did not. Uh, but are, uh, Dan, are you still on the phone? I am. Do you have a specific question about the OA? No, that was, well, yes, on the OA, I guess. Are you going to be getting a revised OA that is simply for five months operation, whereas Edison is now claiming that the decision as to whether to run longer than that is uh, within their jurisdiction without having to get your approval? Because if that's the case, the OA that you should be getting is for far more than five months. I, I, I believe what I heard earlier was that the, the supplemental OA was was um, going to be addressing the 150-day time period, which is uh, consistent with the, the Steam Generator 2 Integrity Program in the tech specs, which is you do the operational assessments um, for the planned period that you're going to be operating for. Um, and then once that period is... Mr. Palmazano was just mentioning, uh, after the end of that period, you, they would, you would be required to do another operational assessment and projecting forward how the additional, you know, any additional wear that would occur beyond that time period. Um, so without, and I think um, to, to go specifically to the question of whether we should be asking for anything beyond that, um, I, and, and I'll refer to Emmett if, 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 or if the, there needs to be anything more on that, I, I think it would be, uh, we would not, you wouldn't be able to project 
both what's going to happen now as well as what's going to happen then unless you have a complete cycle. If you have, if you, you start up, start, start shut down and then start up and shut down again. I mean, the whole purpose is to look at what occurred during that, that one cycle, uh, and then project what goes forward through the, through the program. You know, what, what the, what the, where is going to be for the next interval. So, um, providing something for two intervals out, I believe, is beyond what the, what the requirements specify. That's correct. Uh, if, if I could just respond, and I think this is a really big deal, because the Cal, the confirmatory action letter you issued, said they cannot restart until they get your approval. But they're asking you to give the approval saying, hey, we'll only run for five months. But once you've given that approval, the position they seem to be taking is that they can then choose on their own to keep running, in fact, for years. So if your approval is necessary to determine restart, your approval should be based on what that approval can authorize. And that could be not five months, but years. And I think that's the fundamental problem here, is that five months, you're not even going to be able to tell the difference in terms of the wear um, on uh, many of these tubes, uh, you know, compared to the 22 months we've already seen. So they're coming in and kind of lowballing what they want you to get permission for, but once you give them that permission, they're going to be able to use that permission for far more than they asked you. And therefore, the analyses that are provided to you should really be for all that they would be permitted to do if, indeed, you authorized restart. Yeah, I appreciate that input. Uh, but I, 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 you know, I can... I can Tell you that our, our our assessment is going to be on you know what they what they've provided to us uh, in in any decision. We'll also consider um, longer term um, uh, you know uh, operation uh, in process and how and how that's going to be addressed going forward. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then you better tell the Hill I think that you're contemplating giving them open-ended approval for long-term running, but only analyzing what the effects are for five months. I think there'll be a lot of surprise on the Hill about that. I, I don't think I said that. I think what I said is that we're reviewing what's been put before us, the plan that's been put before us, and that any decision we make would also consider any, the longer-term process. Um, and that's one of the reasons why actually we, we've been, we have indicated to the licensee from the very beginning that we, we need to understand what their long-term plan is. And, and I believe that's why they provided that in this, this RAI 32, 32 response, is to start that, that dialogue and that understanding of the long-term plan. Uh, let me just reiterate, what they've told you is they believe they have the power once you say they can restart, that they get to choose their long-term plan. And yet you're not analyzing for what the effects are of that long-term operation. I've made my point. I just think that this is really um, very troubling, and um, it is not the way a safety analysis ought to be done. One should be analyzing what the potential effects are of a permitting restart if, in fact, that permission allows them to run for considerably longer than five months without having to get your okay. Yeah, Mr. Hirsch, this is Art Howe. I, I would just uh, note that the terms of the confirmatory action that are remain in place until such time that it's changed, and that the staff will decide what mechanism by which to change that. So, uh, so no decisions have been made at this point, and, but we will. We understand your point, and we'll take that into account as we go forward. All right. Thank, thank you, Ray. Thank you, Ray. Let's have a question here in the audience. Hello, uh, my name is Mark Vosberg. I'm with CAN, Coalition Against Nukes. And I would like to concur with Kendra Aldrich, Aldrich excuse me, uh, and the uh, earlier caller regarding the concerns about REI 32. Specifically, REI 32 troubles us greatly. The possibility that is being entertained here today seems to be that the Commission will consider possibly changing their own regulations and ignoring the the spirit of the regulation itself, uh, it seems to me the regulation is very clear. 100% power, full power, that's 100% of licensee uh, power that, that was, uh, that's on record. We know that 
Seventy percent does not equal one hundred percent. Okay, last time I checked, seventy does not equal one hundred. Okay, I want to be very clear on that. The, the public that I'm in touch with is very concerned about the possibility of changing that regulation to accommodate the licensee. All right, thank you, Mark. Uh, I, I, you have any questions? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, I, I have another uh, question as well. Following uh, the the, uh, the question is, which part of 100 percent do they not understand? Now, uh, the other uh, question that I would have, I have an RAI of, of our own here, and that is, uh, okay, I'm. Um, hello, okay. Uh, I have an RAI of my own, and that is the Mitsubishi memo. Uh, the, the, in specific, I'm, uh, specifically, I'm talking about the memos that uh, Mark, Barbara Boxer and... Mark, excuse uh, me. I'm going to stop you right there for a minute. Okay. This is not the forum to be talking about that. We're here to discuss REIs. We have the right people. The public is very concerned about that. I would like that. I know, I, can I ask when that would be available to us and why it's taking so long for us to get that memo? We'll try to get you an answer. Okay. Uh, are you taking this situation seriously for our, from our lawmakers? We're, uh, we're absolutely taking all these situations seriously, but what I'm saying is this is not something that we, we can entertain just now, and we're trying to focus our discussion and questions on these RAIs. So uh, it'll be noted that that's a question. And I am requesting that additional okay. information. And Thank we you. appreciate that. Thank you very much. Kendra. Um, Rick, I appreciate you recognizing that I wasn't quite uh, done earlier, so thank you. Um, so I appreciate uh, Dan Dorman's insight that uh, he has not been approached for confirmatory order, but in fact my question was not answered. My question was whether anybody at that table or anybody else within the agency, to your knowledge, has been approached by Edison and how often with a request to address the concerns raised in RAI 32 with the confirmatory order. Specifically, limiting power to 70% operation. If I understand your question, your question is, has SEE specifically asked us whether or not we to, to, to issue a confirmatory order? Is that what you're asking? Well, what I'm asking is, you know, if if you insist on this interpretation as the regulator that they actually have to comply with the wording of their technical specification, if they have expressed to you that they would be amenable to a confirmatory order to address that concern rather than them having to apply for a license amendment, which quite frankly they should have applied for months ago. May I, I think that that again, I, I think I would I would defer that to the, the licensee whether or not they're interested in a, in a confirmatory order or not. Not not to us whether uh, or not we're. I, I think that this is this is an issue of public transparency. Oh, I mean, the Kendra, public. No, I think, no, no, I think let, what let they're finish. saying is that no one has approached the NRC. They haven't said that. No one at that table has, has said that they haven't. At the table, been approached by Edison about doing a confirmatory action. Or that they would be amenable to no a one from Southern California Edison has specifically asked me if the NRC would be amenable to a confirmatory order. And oh. have they, to same, your knowledge? Here. Dan? No? I already answered that. Art? The only way I would just say that there have been discussions, as there has been with members of the public, about uh, what uh, paths may uh, be likely or, or feasible uh, depending on the answers to RAI 32. I think that was a yes. Uh, no. There have been discussions about uh, all paths uh, and all options. Uh, for example, uh, they could, as they indicated, they've maintained their original position on the uh, technical specification, which is that they're compliant. Uh, if that were the case and, and we still disagree, there's a process to handle that disagreement. It's the back fit process. Uh, confirmatory order, uh, license amendment request, um, or revised operational assessment. So all four of those have been asked by various members of the public and, and also uh, by licensee and us. All right. Thank you, Kendra. 
What about Emmett? Emmett, the Biden. Biden. Sorry, what? <laughs> Negative. I have heard no such inquiry. Okay. All right. Thank you. Like Thank you, Kendra. All right, let's go back to the phones. Uh, do we have anyone else on the phone that would like to ask a question at this moment? Yes. Renald, your line is open. Hello? Hello, we can hear you loud and clear, Renault. Okay, all right. Let me first say this. These regulations apply to all the 140 actors and affect all Americans, not only Edison. So you cannot change the rules for one utility. This way, NRC is compromising their position and their obligations to all Americans and for all other reactors. What I hear is that Edison is saying forget about the mistakes made by SCE and MHI and forget about what happened to Unit 3. Just give us permission to operate at 70% power and our operators can handle any kind of an accident scenario, oh. and we'll go on from there. All right, so, so what's it is the job of the NRC now to be totally fair to everybody and force regulations equally. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bernal. Thank you very much. Anyone else on the phone that would have a question or make a comment? Yes. Bruce Campbell, your line is open. Thank you. So, uh, I asked this at a NRC hearing in Orange County, but didn't get a response. When was the anti-vibration bar design team formed to evaluate steam generator replacements at San Onofre? And what were the dates of their meetings? And if you don't have that info with you now, can, it, can you get it to me within... This week, for instance, we might be able to do that, Bruce. Hang on just a minute. Uh, could, could you indicate to me which RAI you're referring to um, in this question so we can try to narrow that down, what you're asking about? I don't have the RAIs in front of me. Also, I want to... Okay, could you, could, you, could you narrow down the topic of what it is that you're... You're talking about a, the design team. Generator replacements at San Onofre. They formed an anti-vibration bar design team, and I want to know when it was formed, when they first met, and, and, and you're what refer date their meetings were. Are you referring to a design team that was formed after the uh, the cow the cow was established? Is that what you're? Are you, are you talking about a, any design I team? I believe. I believe Edison and the NRC are well aware which team I'm talking about and don't try to divert uh, attention just uh, because I don't have all documents in front of me right now. Are you talking about a design team that was established after March of last year? I believe it was established in the middle of the last decade or somewhere around there is what I understand. Okay. Are, are there two anti-vibration bar design teams? I'm th I was particularly asking about the first one, but I'd like to know. I'm, I'm trying all meetings of all anti-vibration bar design teams related to steam generator replacements at San Onofre. All right, hang on. We're going to try to get you an answer, Bruce. Just a minute. Thank you. I don't know if we respond. Can we ask him to send this in and we respond to him in writing because this sounds like it might be a little more elaborate. Yeah, I, 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 I mean, it, uh, the only design team I'm aware of is, is prior to. The, the Cal response, and so that, that that's not part of the review, our review right now. It's okay. the, the original design team stuff. So, yeah, that would need to be something that would be submitted in writing, and we could respond to that. Yeah, Bruce, I, since the, this does not pertain to these RAIs, I'm just going to ask you to submit this to us in writing, and so we can get you a concise answer. Uh, if you can just give us a give us that in writing, we would really appreciate it, and we'll try to get you an answer because we do want to answer your question. Okay. And the best place to send the question would it be on that uh, on that sheet handed out in yes at the NRC meeting in Orange County that address. Yes, sir. And don't forget to check the box that you would like a response, and we'll see yeah. to it that we get a response for you. Okay. And that, this would be in regards to every anti-vibration bar design team, whether it was last decade or 
this decade? I, I don't have a response for that right now, but we will we will research this and we will try to get you an accurate response. Yeah. Okay. What, what would help us the most is, is if your question is specific to what it is you're looking for, because um, that's what I was trying to get is is to understand, you know, if, if you're if you're talking about uh, any teams that were developed, you know. You know, years ago, or teams that, that have developed more recently, or, or, or what? Because I'm not exactly sure. Yeah. You no, know, Bruce. When, when you asked, particularly, I was particularly referring to what was the team that met last decade. But uh, but I'm also interested in the in the newer teams if they exist. Okay. We, we, if you send that in, we'll get you an answer. Okay. Thank you, Bruce. Uh, okay, next caller, operator. Thank you, Paul Patterson. Your line is open. Hi, Paul. Hi. Hi, how are you? Can you hear me? We sure can. Go ahead. Um, just really quickly, on the um, just procedurally, I'm trying to, you know, just from a, a non-expert perspective, we're just trying to get a sense as to um, what the time frame is here, sort of what the next steps are. So we, uh, the RAIs, you, you guys have questions about them, and... Um, you know, it's going to go back and forth. Just sort of what the next steps are, and, and when do you think when do you think you'd be in a position to make a decision on restart? Go ahead, Dan. Yep, Paul. This is Dan Dorman. Um, the as I indicated earlier, we don't have a set time frame because we're going to follow our questioning and we're going to follow our technical evaluation until we get to a conclusion. But uh, the information that the licensee provided here today is that they estimate that they'll respond to our latest 35 questions within about the next two to three weeks. Uh, the staff is continuing to evaluate the responses that we've received to the first 32, uh, and then we will evaluate the responses to the next 35. And, and uh, if we don't have any further questions, we'll get into development of the documentation and a lot of internal discussion of, of uh, the evaluation evaluation that we've done. Uh, in parallel, we've got some inspection activities that will continue to be ongoing. Uh, so I would say that the earliest that we would expect to reach a decision would be probably late April. Uh, but I, I caveat that because there, as we continue through this, there may be additional questions that come up uh, that would cause that to slip out further. That's great. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much. And thanks for the call. All right, Paul. Folks on the phone and in the audience here at this time, we've, we said we we're going to take 20 minutes. We've taken about 34. Uh, I was never that good at telling time. But anyway, we took 34 minutes, and this concludes our non-proprietary portion of the meeting. So we're going to take a break. Uh, if you folks on the phone have any additional questions, Please feel free to submit them to the NRC via the public website, and we'll try to get you some answers, especially if they pertain to these RAIs or this RAI process, review process. So thank you. We're going to take a 15-minute break, and when we come back, we're going to be just uh, dealing with uh, folks that are able to deal with proprietary information. So that will discount you folks from the public and the news media. Sorry, Kendra. Thank you very much. Well, let's get back together at uh, 320. What's that? 10 minutes.